I'm Izzy Goodshell Michaelman, and I am a rising freshman at Harvard University. Uh, my name is Meg Whiteley, and I am the Urban Farm Manager here at the Hub City Farmers Market Urban Farm. Um, and so you're going to join us on a little bit of a tour of the Urban Farm today. Uh, we are talking about and introducing our educational program. We're really trying to revamp the system um, to make it more attractive to local teachers and also students. Uh, and so we're looking at addressing state standards and everything with all of our activities out here uh, and make it really hands-on education so the kids will actually enjoy the experience of learning. Um, and so Izzy's been working with me this summer on revamping that and looking at state standards and, and what activities we can do that are fun for the kids and educational at the same time. Um, so we'll just walk around and, and talk about the program as we go and talk about some of the stuff we have growing out here. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay, so some of the stuff that we've got going on here, it's kind of a transition phase right now um, as we stand in early August. Uh, we've got a bunch of our summer stuff that's kind of finishing off or petering out, and we're also replanting some of our fall stuff. So right here I've got a row of um, winter squash, and so that'll be producing um, Roughly the month of October, we'll get most of our uh, production off of these plants here. Um, and in a row over here and over here, we've just got germinating a uh, late crop of snap peas. Um, and so we're really trying to maximize the use of space and also the seasonality out here. Um, you can probably hear the greenhouse in the background and that's where we start all of our uh, transplants. So all the squash and everything, um, all the tomatoes, the peppers that we will introduce you to, that's where they started out is in the greenhouse. Um, and then we've got some of our tomato plants right here. Uh, we do ours on a fence and everything just to keep them up off the ground, keep them well supported. Um, and then we do prune out the lower branches as they go along. They might look a little silly to you guys, but um, we do that just to help reduce disease pressure and pest pressure uh, and make it easier just to go through and harvest. Uh, I've got some sweet peppers right here. We've got multitude of different bells, colored bells, um, green bells, and everything as well as some Italian frying peppers. So we've got some more peppers over here. We've got a little trellis system over here um, and that supports some of our raspberry plants. Um, we've got um, an early spring crop of raspberries this year. Uh, I just planted them last fall so they're kind of uh, just starting to produce um, this year and then next year we'll get a lot more berries off of them. Um, so trying to introduce a lot more uh, sustainability and everything with regard to perennials and annuals and everything. Really maximizing the use of the space. Got more peas over here. These are cucumbers that are pretty much done for the season. I've gotten a, a couple hundred pounds of uh, cucumbers so far this year and so those will come up in the next week or so. I have got some really crazy tomatillos over here. Um, those guys have done really well this year as well. Um, and also, they're really something fun and unique that you don't see at a farmer's market very often. And then coming up here, um, we've got an arbor right here that's got some kiwi fruit on it. A lot of people don't think that you can grow kiwi fruit here in South Carolina, but you can. Uh, this is a cold hardy variety of kiwi fruit. Uh, and so it can grow all the way up to zone five, which is like upper Massachusetts area. Uh, so it can tolerate some pretty cold temperatures. Um, and I wanna introduce it, and as I show you more of our uh, fruit trees and everything, I wanna introduce more varieties that, you know, might not be as common down here. Um, you know, peaches are everywhere. You can get plums and apples and things like that. So I wanna introduce some stuff that's a little bit different. Um, so we we'll walk up here, we've got some pumpkins growing over here. And those are again be producing in October, so we'll hopefully have some Halloween pumpkins. So up here we've got uh, most of our fruit trees in this little geographic strip here. Um, and this one right here is a little bit fun because it's a pomegranate. We've actually got three pomegranate trees here on the farm. Uh, and it's a little bit fun because a lot of people are not familiar with growing pomegranates uh, this far north. Um, most people think of them as like Florida and things like that. But we can actually grow certain varieties of pomegranate this far north. Uh, and then I've got a couple of different fig trees down here. And I've got some persimmons. Um, and also some pawpaw trees. And one of the things that's neat and different about those is it's something that's a little bit different, a little bit unusual. And also, it's kind of a nod to the heritage of the area. So when settlers originally came here, 
um, they would go into the woods and they would start to forage. And some of the things that they found were persimmons and pawpaws in this region. Um, and so pawpaws are actually really cool. They are the largest tree fruit native to North America. Um, and so, you know, bringing something like that back to the area and reintroducing it is something that's very close to my heart. Um, and I want to share that with kids. Um, something that, you know, their grandparents or great-great-grandparents might have eaten in this area, but they might not be familiar with. Um, so that's kind of one of the things that we're trying to do here is expose these kids um, and their parents to different things. Well, just one thing that I wanted to add was, you know, after Meg took us on this great tour of the farm that our program really will be using all of the farm. I mean, you can see behind me, we kind of have some more a seated area for more of an outdoor classroom uh, feel, but we really want kids to engage, not only just sit and write on a farm, but really engage with the entire farm. And something we're really excited about. Okay.